Hello. In this video I'm returning to the design of the rudder servo and in particular the sensor that's necessary in order to for the software to be able to sense where the rudder is in case it has been moved by external forces uh, whilst the power was off for example. I made this bracket here which holds the motor and all the other components. Um, and then I realised that it wasn't uh, quite long enough, so I made another one. And that's the right length. And I've got all the holes in the right position, but this hole, somehow when I tapped it, I stripped the thread. So what I've got to do now is drill this out to four millimetres, braise it to full, then redrill it to three millimetres, tap it to M3 and hold my breath, cross my fingers and hope for the best. Here is one aluminium bracket I made to hold this opto switch. Um, I made it and uh, it wasn't suitable so I made another one. This one has got two round holes in it and uh, four slots. Piddling little thing but the amount of fiddling and filing I've had to do to make this thing is just incredible. This is what it looks like when I've installed the uh, opto switch um, and I can uh, adjust it this way and that way as necessary. Um, because there's so little clearance in this box I've got to have this bracket coming forward up to the edge of the box therefore I had to cut off the second mounting hole here of this uh, black plastic switch so I've just got one mounting hole so I think what I'll do is when I've got it adjusted correctly I'll put a dab of epoxy resin on this end well finally I've got this thing assembled um, it's worse than a jigsaw puzzle, you have to assemble it in exactly the right order otherwise you can't do things. But, and I've assembled it loose at the moment because I can adjust uh, the two opto switches in and out to get them to line up with these uh, transparent arcs. Um, and it fits in the box like that. One of the reasons the fit is so tight here is that I've got several of these uh, motors with different reduction ratios and this one is longer and so I wanted to be able to interchangeably fit this one uh, in here instead of that one. So that's why it all has to be pushed forward like that. A problem with this box is it has only two mounting holes and they are exactly collinear with the axis of the motor which is the worst possible place um, to have a mounting hole. Um, I was intending to use this bracket to fix the whole thing to the box down there but of course I discovered I can't do that because I can't get anywhere near there to screw a bolt in. So I'm going to have to redesign that bracket so that it comes out, it's fixed permanently onto that and comes out sideways so that I can then screw bolts down that way in the, uh, the one piece of clearance that I have there. So this is just another example of uh, the infinite pain that this thing has turned out to be. And, um, I suppose doing another one would be easier than doing the first one, but uh, I should be very reluctant to uh, engage in making one of these things again. We'll have to find a better solution than this, or more off-the-shelf solution than this, I think. Well, I finally got this rudder servo assembled in one piece, albeit outside its box. So, here it is, with the little black disc and its two um, opto switches on either side detecting um, 
whether the rudder is out of alignment and then we have an Arduino um, driving the stepper motor and I've just fixed a temporary shaft to it with the rudder pointing downwards as it were um, so that I can see what's going on. If we turn the power off and reapply it, it will calibrate itself hopefully by moving to the two extremes and working out where the centre is. So that's uh, okay. If I turn the power off again and uh, move the rudder by external means, say like that, then likewise it should recover when the power is turned on again. And uh, so if we move it to an impossible position, which is uh, well outside its feasible positions, mm -hmm. it will recover from that as well. So that's nice. So here's a closer view of that. And there are no uh, moving parts in this thing, or no, nothing touching on that sensor. So that's the uh, servo position sensor sorted out and I only need to fix that motor in, in the box and uh, put the box in the boat and we should be ready to rock. Um, as you may have gathered this has been rather a tiresome piece of work and uh, it's made me wish I had a milling machine among other things uh, and a better pillar drill or, or maybe I'd just use a milling machine as, a, as if it were a drill. Um, but uh, unfortunately milling machines are rather expensive and very heavy. Um, but uh, I'm thinking we'll use what I've just devised for, te for, for the test boat and maybe we need to go back to the drawing board yet again and find uh, a different solution for the uh, actual boat. Um, even with the 27 to 1 gearbox, uh, which was the one I was showing you a minute ago, uh, it's still possible to turn the rudder by applying an external force, and I don't like that, um, which means that really we should have a worm drive rather than this epicyclic um, one. But the only worm drive that's so far been available is the one that uh, Andredge uh, tested the JGY370 and that uh, failed after a while because of uh, basically I think lack of lubrication it's the feature of worm wheels that they wipe the lubrication off themselves um, so really ideally a, a worm wheel uh, gear needs to be uh, in a bath of oil so that it can't get rid of its own lubrication and that's just not possible with the JGY370 because the motor is not sealed in any way and neither are any of the, the two input output shafts. So um, possibly back to the drawing board in the long term but I'm going to work with this thing uh, for the uh, um, immediate test purposes and we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching.